Well, I think Macron was elected on a platform uh, which was clearly, and that hadn't happened for some time in France, pro-European integration. So Macron had no doubt that this is the way to go. The question is not whether, but the question is how. And he has tabled a series of proposals where EU integration could be deepened, uh, could be uh, improved in economic and monetary terms, in research, in defense, in the internal market. So there are a variety of fields where we know we could do better. And what he said is France is ready to move in this direction, even if France will have to make concessions which it hasn't done for the past. This is what building Europe is about. Oh, I mean, there are many, uh, for historical reasons, for reasons that have to do with religion, for reasons that have to do with the mix between industry, farming services. I mean, Ireland and France have many reasons to go in the same direction, and especially given our uh, special relationship with the UK, your Irish special relationship with the UK at a time where this is in play with Brexit. So I, I can see the two people who are from the same generation, young people, sometimes a bit transgressive here and there, they don't hesitate to change reality. It's, it's a good couple. I think so, and including in a pan-European discussion within uh, uh, EU27. And I think there are many areas where you know, France and Ireland will have the same sort of position, the same sort of ambition. Again, European integration is not whether this is the answer is a given, it's how. And it's time to do that while we have a German Chancellor who also seems to be open to moving forward. There is a window of opportunity which we have not had for the last 10 years, not only because of the economic crisis. If you look at opinion polls on the continent, support for your integration has gone up by 10% in a year, which is good because we need support of public opinion to do that. They need support of public opinion. So there is a window which I think both uh, the Republic of Ireland and France could exploit. Well, I just uh, finished last summer a big report for the European Commission on the next uh, European Research and Framework Programme. So, the best step Europe would do is double the EU budget for research and innovation. We spend 10% of the whole of the public funding in Europe at EU level. We all know it is more efficient at EU level. We all know this is where we lag behind. The US, China, Korea, we all know this is the economy of tomorrow. So let's invest more in research and innovation. Well, my own sense on this is that uh, it's more bark than bite, and that uh, there are signals of resistance to globalization, there are signals of deglobalization here and there, but this is more the appearance than the reality. And if you look at Brexit, for instance, it's a bit of a paradox to want to deglobalize from Europe to reglobalize with the world. I mean, after all, if I understand well, uh, Theresa May's policy is about global Britain, not de-global Britain. So there are different, several sides, but at the end of the day, I believe that we are on a planet which has been interconnected, interwoven very deeply for the recent decades, and that the cost of moving out from this integration are now too high for it to happen seriously. I may be wrong, that's my view and that's my experience on the trade side.